Hello there, folks, and welcome to round six in the Big Bang qualifiers, or at least one of them. There's so many games going on at once, it is insane backstage. You do not have no idea. Trust me. Anyway, this game we have Bob Chaos in pink on the Sun Spawn of Amplus. Going bot first, Nair second, uh, with uh, 1 2 spawn for the Eco. 1 3, in fact, with a third bot. Meanwhile, we have Promethean Kalesh on the North Spawn in light blue. Uh, going bots first. Following that up with another bot factory and two air factories. I didn't see the order, apologies. But heavy energy start. Four plan, five as well, after a couple more factories. So we've got quite a way to go with the energy there. Now, let's take a step back for a moment and have a look at this map. This place is a beast. If you're unaware, with Amplus, or Thanatos, as the planet is called, Amplus is the system, I believe, this place is humongous! For a 1v1, this is a nightmare to play on insofar as there is so much that you have to be aware of. Expansions can happen anywhere at any time, and you just ha there's always something to do because of the size. There's Any downtime is potentially time that is costing you in in uh, in long term uh, terms, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so air expansions are a thing that can happen. Air scouting is a thing that has to be omnipotent. Intelligence is the key on this map. It really is. Now, another thing that is really important is naval. This horseshoe lake here. is quite important to get a hold of and we can already see here naval is going in surprisingly far back that it was built but the scout here the firefly has got a scout on it so we might see an interceptor on his way i think that one is on his way down here let's have a look is he on his way no he's just moving there oh no he has got to move command look so he will take out that fabricator <coughs> That is the disadvantage with air fabricators and why intelligence is omnipotent. Perfect example right there. Well done, Kalesh. Now, I did see Bob Chaos's earlier game. He did do quite well on Blitz. But, uh, I'm not going to lie. Blitz is probably less than half the size of this map. Hence the name. <coughs> but, I mean... You know, that's not to say it won't do good on this map, but I do know how good Promethean Kalesh is. I also know, I think they are uber rank. Bob Chaos, I'm not sure on his rank. I think it might be gold, perhaps? Gold or platinum? I don't know offhand, I'm afraid, so don't quote me on that. You can look it up yourselves on PA stats, or if you do have PA, you can uh, look up the ladder or whatever. But there we are. So... Let's have a look at uh, what's going on in a little bit more detail. So Kalesh, with all of his groups of bots going everywhere, is getting that presence that's everywhere and necessary. The disadvantage of this is that if you do come across a superior blob of, uh, of units, they'll get shut down pretty quickly, right? So if these four here met those bunch, it, they wouldn't have really done much. I mean, wow, a favourable trade there, one for two. And a fair bit of damage, but you, you 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 get the point, right? That smaller groups of units are easier to kill off than larger groups of units, and still maintain a presence. In, if you do have a collision between those two and a little skirmish, one with the larger numbers will, by and large, have some left over. And again, given the intelligence, what we said, that's the important thing about Amplus. Now we can see Kalesh putting uh, interceptors on all the groups of mechs that he can, just getting that scouting everywhere. This is really important, especially of this middle section, because people tend to play for this middle section just because there's such a dense cluster of metal pretty much everywhere. This is one I personally tend to go for and is usually a safe bet, simply because people don't tend to expand this way around. They tend to play down this corridor here, or through naval, or through the middle. Players do tend to forget about this. Kalesh here, though, managing to scout it and will end up sending a bomber around and shutting it down. I did see a bomber somewhere. Yeah, there it is. It's just finished on the uh, landing pad. I'm sure I saw one. It might have been shot down, of course. Kalesh already, though, with the air superiority pretty much everywhere. 
Oh no, it was Pink's Bombers that I saw. My mistake. But yeah, one coming down this way. It will take out that Fabricator unless it is unlucky enough to get shot down by one of these docks that's going to pass over. All of these interceptors flying over this way is kind of a bit of a giveaway. I mean, you want to avoid that because, you know, it's given Bob Chaos a chance to get that AA turret up. And the AA turret will get up before the bomber gets there. In fact, did it get shot down by that? It must have got shot down by that. By those docks. Or is it just on an area patrol? No, it's just on an area patrol. Wow. And the AA turret goes up. Wow. And a radar as well. Losing a whole bunch of interceptors here from Kalesh. Not what I would have expected from Kalesh at all. But um, <clears throat> there we are. So we have the commander in the water now with three naval factories. Running a little bit low on eco though. That's the importance of expanding. But the earlier Faber losses kind of hurt just a little. Excuse me, just a little bit. These bombers up here though doing a good bit of work. Good bomber run getting off and uh, killing a whole bunch of docks there. We'll get a second run off. Perhaps... No, where did it go? Wow, my eyes can't keep up today. It's, it's that time of day. It's getting a little bit late. But that's quite a sizable clump of docks. And all they need to do is move that way just a smidgen. And they will lock down this expansion before it really gets going. Bombers coming in. They can always go for those fabricators just to make sure. And there they will go for the two, hopefully first. Yep, there they go. Down go the two. The interceptors manage to trade, leaving the bombers still alive. There is still the fabricator there that maybe they want to focus down, but I think they might just end up leaving it alone for the time being. See, because they're focusing down those factories. Because I mean, this is why I say you get factories up at expansions because they can build spinners and do all of this stuff. You see, the bombers just going down there, and you can build more spinners. And it's fine. And these fabricators here, though, are going to go down, unfortunately. A second one on a second pass. But down it goes. Oh, no, it did go down. That's unfortunate. But you, you, you get the point. <clears throat> Case in point, as it were. Now, three air fabricators here. Kalesh, knowing that his opponent isn't really scouting very much, so he knows it's safe to expand with all these air fabricators. And just looking at the North Pole, look at all that mechs he has claimed. Looking at the South Pole, not quite so much from Bob Chaos, and that's reflected in the economy scores there. 187 against 117, not great. Bob Chaos had a much heavier energy start though. Going up to 8k compared to 7.4 from uh, Kalesh. Army tab though, Kalesh 30 in the lead. Factory count is even though. With only one navy, the rest mostly air factories, one vehicle, a couple of bots. So Kalesh splitting the uh, forces evenly there. Interestingly, Bob Chaos has built vehicles in the main base here. Not something I might recommend. I'd prefer to build those as a forward base, especially on a map this size, simply because of the travel time. Unless you have a plan to get a teleporter up, and unless you can, you're sure you can execute that plan. Otherwise, those tanks aren't going to see any action for another good minute and a half, at, at least. And the units you want, you don't want them not doing anything. You want them doing as much as they can, you know. Be it harassing expansions, or or whatever. But just doing something that they're putting work in and they're paying for themselves as soon as possible. The alternative, of course, is that he's clumping up a whole bunch of units because he knows that he's, or at least he thinks, he might be outproduced on land, simply because he hasn't scouted very much. Let's have a look at Bob Chaos. He hasn't scouted at all. Sir. Intelligence is a must. A must, a must, a must. So. Let's go back to the bigger picture now. We can see the naval coming in. Unfortunately, it is going to meet a torpedo launcher, and that's going to lock it down just a little bit. It's going to be close to see... Are they going to stop before they get there? No, I think that uh, torpedo is going to get up just in time, especially now that the narwhals come out in front to soak some of the damage. Good choice from those narwhals. Moving in, the, uh, the torpedo launcher gets up and is putting in the work. Look at that. Bomber's coming in as well. Not what you want to do against narwhals. That was a needless waste of a bomber. But still, lock down that entire naval force that had probably been taking Bob Chaos's production for the best part of... I Maybe say five minutes, and it's all just gone in a matter of seconds. 
And of course, that's bottled in at a choke point. So now, having invested three naval factories, <coughs> he can't really do anything with them. So Kalesh has not only blocked the attack, but he's also effectively, certainly for the time being, obsoleted any production from those naval factories. And given the pressure he's going to be starting to give on the other side of the planet there, because we can see there that the metal's lost, that it's really going to start to ramp up and begin that snowball's descent. Because at this point we can see that the stalling is real, more than a hundred more mechs, double the uh, power income for Kalesh, and the army tab is growing as well, almost double, not quite, but almost there. <coughs> Excuse me. And, I mean, zooming out, you can just see North Hemisphere is blue. Sort of strip there. It's pink. So you can see the difference in map control just by zooming out and you know, blocking in where the icons are. Oh, excuse me. Right. Now, lots and lots of bombers. I hope the interceptors go in first because, well, there are a few defending. And there are a few narwhals there as well, but he has managed to see that the commander's there. If this isn't dealt with, the marbles are too far away, they aren't going to do enough, and the bomber uh, sniping is real. I did say earlier bomber sniping is still a possibility and why uh, air superiority is so important. That is a multi-pass, oh no's, cries Bob Chaos, with the GG calling straight afterwards. Good game there, very well played from Kalesh, lots of great control, map control, air control, and good uh, naval bottlehead bottlehead <laughs> bottlenecking this is the word I was trying to get to bottlenecking there and uh I ain't <laughs> friendly banter in the chat that's so really nice of you but I mean I did miss the raiding back here but it's fairly evident that it happened you know you've got scorch marks on the earth um but yeah, I mean, he didn't really use his bots all that much to great effect. I suppose he didn't really need to, to be honest, because he had the air control, and once he realised he had the air control, and once he made himself safe from any naval threats, he could say, you know what, you're not really doing very much, you're not scouting, you haven't got air control yourself, and chances are you don't have anti-air in your base, I'm going to go for a bomber sniper. Let's actually have a look back here before those air go up. Let's have a look at what Kelesh can see. What has he scouted? What has he seen of the command? He must have known that it was there. Otherwise, that was a bit of a risky play, to be honest. It doesn't look as though he did, but he did know the scouting. He did know roughly what the base was. So I think it's fair to say that it was a safe uh, a safe execution of a plan there to go with the uh, the bomber snipe and push in there from behind the naval factories. And there's the multipass in all of its eternal glory. Scrolling down from a distance, we can see that glorious commander explosion. Mm. Uh, mushroom cloud rising over the horizon. <coughs> Pop a like if you liked that video. And the mushroom cloud, of course. Mushroom cloud is the main bit of the video, right? The end of the game, the explosion. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to pop a like if you liked it. And comment, any feedback, please drop them, in, uh, drop them below. Don't forget to subscribe for more PA videos on the way very, very soon indeed. Thanks again for watching, and as always, have a nice day. See you next time. This game is the big battle that is about to
Newcastle takes the victory.